Hey guys, and welcome to another Let's Play. This is Front Mission First, and this is a game, actually, or should I say a game series that I've wanted to get into for quite a while. Now, the only Front Mission game that I've actually ever played prior to this one would be Front Mission 3. Way back, way, way back. Um on the original PlayStation back in the day. Now, a couple of years ago, I nearly, nearly started doing Front Mission 3 uh, because that was, I believe Front Mission 3 was the first game that came out that was actually had an official translation because it came out everywhere. Front Mission 1 and I believe 2 were Japanese only. In fact, I think Front Mission 2 is still Japanese only. Um, but they did bring out Front Mission first on the original DS. And I actually have that version of the game. Now, without getting into DS emulation and things like that, which was something I was going to consider, um, it would have been very difficult to record it. Uh, I did actually start playing it on my uh, 3DS XL. Or, or new 3DS XL. God, there's so many 3DSs. Because um, I've got a modded version of that. And uh, I actually really, really enjoyed the game, but I did struggle with playing it on the 3DS because, you know, I like the 3DS and I like the DS, but I was, I've was i never been a humongous fan of them. So I got about halfway through the game and then they announced Front Mission First Remake out of nowhere. And not only that, they announced that they're remaking the second game as well and they're remaking the third game all for the nintendo switch so i thought i'll I'd, I'd just hold on and uh sit down buy it when it comes out and go through it now how is this remake um it's pretty good actually it's incredibly faithful to the DS version it just has slightly better graphics and I, I really do mean slightly better graphics I mean it's 3d but <sighs> it feels like this is this is like an Xbox live arcade game from um, you know back on the 360 and that's fine because it is a budget game now as you can see we have new game plus there because I've already completed the main campaign uh, I basically became addicted to this which is good this carried me throughout Christmas um, and up until a couple of days ago when I finally finished it because I'm trying to get into a I'm trying to get into the um, what do you call it the routine of actually completing a game before I start recording it uh, and I think I'm going to try and do that going forwards uh, now this game like its DS remake actually has two campaigns you have the standard ordinary campaign and then you have another campaign from the other side. I haven't completed that yet, but I have started it. But we don't need to worry about that because that's a thousand years off into the distance. Now, as much as I would like to do New Game Plus because you get extra stuff, I think we won't. Uh, I'm probably going to play New Game Plus through on my own at some point. Apparently, the more you complete this game, the more unlockable stuff you get, which is really interesting. Uh, but we're just going to go new game. Uh, I guess we'll play the tutorial. Sure. Now, difficulty. This is a conundrum. So, if you just want to play through and get the story. And the story's not bad. It's okay. It's very dark. Very, very dark and grisly. Um, then you can go for a recruit, I suppose. Uh, I'm probably just going to go corporal. Because I fully believe these harder difficulties are here for new game plus uh, essentially because i did try it on lieutenant and i had three mechs pile on to one enemy mech and because they massively buffed the damage increase uh, and the attacks are also random i couldn't destroy a single enemy um, so I tried that a couple of times. And I just came away from it thinking, yeah, these harder difficulties are probably just for um, uh, new game pluses and things like that. Because 
man, when you've got to put your entire team on one enemy and it still doesn't go down and it destroys like three of yours. And most of these levels, if not all of these levels and missions, I guess, you actually have to destroy all of the enemy. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not really sure. I don't remember having different difficulties uh, in the other games. That seems to be something that they've added to the, the remake. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't remember a difficulty selector in the original game. Anyway, let's go. We're going to go for modern controls because it allows us to move the camera. It allows us like a really cool like battle map that we can look at, which is interesting. Um, and it has fixes and improvements. I don't know what that means, but there you go. Uh, or if we go classic, we can have the... Um, standard camera view uh, experience from the original front uh, front mission first game yeah I mean uh, yeah modern sure so I really did enjoy this game really did the front mission series kind of got done dirty pretty badly uh, over the last couple of entries <laughs> left alive <laughs> Welcome to Huffman Island, Lieutenant. I'm Sergeant Glenn Doval, your personal Wanza trainer for today, sir. Just call me Royd, you're older than me, and you've been in the service for longer than I have. Alright, Lieutenant, I, I mean Royd. I don't usually take part in training exercises like these, but the brass thinks you show great promise as a Wanza pilot, so they've asked me to train you. Thanks. Still, I wonder, I've never seen a lieutenant as young as you. How did you do it? Just luck, I guess. I made it out alive from all the hot zones they kept sending me into. And now you're on Huffman, another potential hot zone. Personally, I'd say you have rotten luck. Depends on how you look at it, Sergeant. Now, are you going to sh uh, show me what this walking coffin can do? Okay, let's start with the basics. I don't doubt you have great survival skills on the battlefield, but applying them to a Wanza will require a lot of practice. No doubt. First, let's try moving your Wanza. When you select a unit, its movement range is displayed as a blue square, blah, blah, yes, cool, we get it. Uh huh, yeah, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, yeah. We get it. We know how a tactical display works, goddammit. Terrain can also offer varying degrees of cover. Cover will give you a defensive bonus under enemy fire. It does, but it, <laughs> it's never going to affect the game. So, Learn to capitalize on these points and you'll be halfway to winning the battle. Yes, having a 3% cover bonus uh, sounds worthless. And yes, you're right. It is worthless. Let's put the theory into practice. Move your Wanza to the green square. You got it, boss. Yep. All right, pretty self-explanatory. That's where we can move to, and we move with the stick or the directional pad. Further directional pad, I'll be honest. But because this is the remake, we can actually move the camera, and uh, we have free look of the camera as well, which is actually really nice. Also, if we push minus, we actually get a tactical overlay uh, which you did not get in the original now I think the 15% terrain cover bonus is the best cover bonus that you can actually get 15% huh? that sounds worthlessly small well dear viewer you'd be right it is worthless the whole train cover system is pointless the enemy phase are we going to meet him in glorious battle? Yes. Good moving your Wanza shouldn't be a problem. Now, let's cover basic Wanza combat. Wanzas can be equipped with a weapon in each hand, and you can also mount weapons and shields on each shoulder. However, you can only use one of these weapons when you attack. There are also three attack types, melee, short range, and long range. Let's have you actually attack something before explaining any further. Yeah, so we have melee combat, short range combat, which is uh, like small arm weapons, 
and long range, which is rockets. Uh, we're, we probably won't be using melee, I'll be honest. Uh, I yeah, just don't see the point of melee in this game. I remember in Front Mission 3, like, having multiple different people set up with different skills actually made a lot of sense. But in this one, nah, not really. There's your target. The option to attack will appear when a target is within range of one of your weapons. All targets in range will be designated by a red square. Select the square to target an enemy, then choose the weapon you want to use. When you are satisfied with your selection, select OK. Now, try attacking the target with the weapons at your disposal. You got it, boss. Alright, so let's move in. So, what is this mech armed with? If we go to more details, we have the PAP-55 and a Zenith Punch. So, if you don't have anything in your off hand, or in one of your hands, you'll just have the standard punch attack. And the stats for that punch attack will be based on your Wanza's body uh, type. And we're in a Zenith, <coughs> so we have the Zenith uh, punch. We also have a bone rocket launcher for long range combat. Rocket launchers are interesting in this game. They are our long range offensive weapon. They do have limited ammo though. So, he's going to attack us and we've got a choice. We can use the PAP 55, we can punch him, or we can guard. Generally, uh, you just want to attack back. You can guard, and in certain instances that can be useful, especially to start with. Uh, but generally, you just want to fight back. As I said, we're not going to be using too much punching or, or well, any melee really, because it's kind of worthless. So, let's go and rattle off back. Short range attacks are the bread and butter of Wanza combat. The number of attacks performed and their damage differ by weapon type. Now, try attacking the target with different weapons. We get uh, experience for every bit of combat that we do. Experience is bizarre in this game. I still don't 100% understand how it works even after practically completing the game twice, but that's fine. So let's attack this guy back. Let's punch him just for the funsies. Now we've broken his arms. Melee attacks are mainly used to focus damage on one location. If you have the proficiency level, you can even attack before they do. Yeah. So we actually broke his arm, which means he can't use that weapon on that arm. That also happens to you. He's done. Great work, but AI opponents aren't what you'll be facing on the battlefield. For your training, you'll have to face me. By the way, there are repair items in your Wanza's backpack. Select the use item from the menu to repair any Wanza's locations that have taken damage. Yeah, once um, a component on your Wanza is broken, it's broken for the rest of the uh, mission apart from if you have spare parts and a supply truck but I've never really bothered replacing damaged parts before it's not it, it happens but it's not super um, common all right well let's go meet this guy in glorious battle unfortunately he's still not in range of our bone and he's gonna get a hit on us let's guard all right barely did anything to us so, let's just wipe them out. Let's go with the PAP 55. Now, one thing that kind of really annoys me about this game that they didn't improve, that I think they should have, is how you equip and outfit your mechs. And we'll get into that. Right, we've actually taken a nasty couple of hits there. Um, our body is okay. We won't actually go down if unless our body gets destroyed. If our, both our arms get destroyed, we'll be disabled and we won't actually be able to fight back, but we can still move. If our legs get destroyed, we can still walk around, just much slow, slower. Um, let's just attack Glenn. There we go. We got him. You can lose there. It changes the dialogue a little bit, but it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Also, the music in this game. 
um, has been like remixed and rewritten and it's more orchestral now and it's really quite good they weren't kidding when they said you had talent no wonder you made lieutenant so fast thanks but could uh, but I could tell you were holding back sergeant why I'm sorry I didn't do it on purpose you see I have a childhood friend who is now in the UCS army and he's about your age a friend in the UCS yeah we were both born and raised on Huffman before all of this hate between the OCU and UCS flared up those were good days so they're the two factions you felt like you were aiming a weapon at this friend so you held back yeah the the dialogue is very weeby and cheesy and just you know there's, there's quite a few lines of dialogue in this game where it just leaves you thinking that humans don't actually talk like this but you know it's a Japanese game as you expect. I guess so I really hope there isn't another war on this island right many people have friends and family on the other side oh before I forget I have orders from command for you you're being promoted to the rank of captain and being appointed leader of your own recon squad. Again, welcome to Huffman, Captain. Mission complete. And we get a kill bonus, which is literally a few bucks thrown at us. For every enemy we kill, we get money. And there's... I don't... I can't actually think of a specific mission. Um, I think you always have to destroy every enemy. I could be wrong. Um, yeah. Uh, if any of your guys go down, permadeath isn't a thing in this. But you have to pay repair costs. And the more guys you lose, that can mount up. However, money is not really a problem in this game. So, this is where we can select um, who we want to play as. This is the actual main campaign. The artwork here is really freaking weird. And... Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I guess that's Royd and a woman that's called Karen that we're going to see and hear about a little bit later on. I don't know why he's literally just holding a pile of junk in his hands. I guess that's a gun. Uh, and, then <laughs> and then, of course, we've got this, which is the second um, side. This was more of a DLC that was added into the uh, PlayStation remake, I believe. Because it came out on PlayStation, but Japanese only, I think. And then it came out onto um, DS in, in over here. It's actually quite an expensive game now. Um, but it is recommended that you play this one first. Because this campaign is a little bit harder, I believe. Not 100% sure. Because um, I haven't really got that far in it. I'm about five, six levels in. So, anyway, OCU side. Yeah, so you've got OCU and you've got UCS. It's very confusing if you have dyslexia like me. Uh, they're just pointless words. It doesn't, doesn't really mean anything. So the second uh, Huffman conflict. Huffman is the island we're on. As seen through the eyes of Captain Royd Clive of the OCU army. Recommended for first time play. Let's go. So we're just going to go standard Royd. And our call sign, I guess our call sign can be, I don't know, a bit weird that your call sign is the same as your actual name, isn't it? Um, let's just go with Titan. There we go. Titan. Let's go. 